be on top of it so you'll be in the know. These are your stories. This is our commitment. This is Sonoma County's FM News Talk. 96.9 and 103.5 KSRO. KSRO at 103.5 in Santa Rosa and 96.9 in Petaluma. Hi, it's Rainy with the Poly Class Foundation. We've been helping families find their missing children and keeping kids safe for almost 30 years. We're here 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and are committed to assisting every family who needs us. We offer free social media safety education in schools and to our community. These programs give our kids the tools they need to avoid being lured online by adult predators. We understand how difficult it can be to talk to your children about these matters, but there are important conversations that must be had. If you'd like some tips on talking with your child, please visit our website for helpful guidance. We rely on your vehicle donations to make these vital programs possible. If you have a car, truck, boat, or RV you no longer need, please give us a call. We make donating easy and you'll receive the maximum tax deduction. Call the Poly Class Foundation today at 707-769-1334 or go to polyclass.org and thank you for your support. Pain in your shoulder can have many causes. Arthritis, injuries from a fall, or just overdoing it with a chore like painting. Learn about the causes of shoulder pain, non-surgical options, treatments, and minimally invasive surgery. Get your questions answered by a trusted orthopedic physician with Sutter Health's Joints Plus program. From advanced physical therapy to robotic-assisted surgery. Sign up for the free online seminar Thursday, May 11th at 6 p.m. Begin your path to a pain-free life. Go to KSRO.com and click on the Sutter banner. KSRO is in the middle of a big move, so you may hear some weirdness on the radio. Don't worry, it's normal. We're working on it. KSRO. It is 818 at KSRO, recapping the top lo local stories. There are two new sexual harassment lawsuits against Sonoma State University. One of the suits involves the husband of former SSU president Judy Sakaki. Petaluma police are looking for a suspect who shot at a motorcyclist on Sunday. The incident happened after an argument over right-of-way at an intersection. And check your receipts. Nearly a third of Sonoma County businesses are failing to charge the correct price at the register. This is a 10% increase in these instances over last year. It is 819 at KSRO. It has been a deadly weekend in Texas. A shooter killed eight people at a mall north of Dallas, and a man drove into a crowd of migrants at a border town near the Gulf, killing seven people. Joining us on the KSRO Live Line is ABC News correspondent Jim Ryan in Dallas. Thanks for talking with us, Jim. Morning, Michelle. So let's start with the mall shooter. What do we know about his background? Well, I thought other than he was in the military, his name is Mauricio Garcia, 33 years old was disrupted out of the Army in 2008 because of what the Pentagon called mental health issues. Beyond that, it's not really clear what he's been doing. The neighbors of his say they weren't sure what he did for a living, except that he would leave dressed in what appeared to be a security guard's uniform. He lived with his parents part of the time down in Dallas. His, uh, or he lived also in a, a long-term motel there as well in Dallas, which is about 25 miles south of where the shooting happened in Allen, Texas on Saturday afternoon. Uh, we also know that he may have had some white supremacist leanings, although he was Hispanic. The FBI has tell, told ABC, some of the investigators involved in this case, that he may have been wearing a patch that indicated some kind of either membership or connection to a white supremacist group, Michelle. Uh, right, Jim, is there a chance that he gets charged with Domestic Terror Act in this case? Well, that, that might have been a possibility the, uh, as he was making his way through the parking lot. A police officer heard the shots being fired. He was at that mall for a different reason. This is a giant outdoor shopping center and one of the biggest in the, in the area. The police officer heard the shots. He engaged the shooter. He shot and killed him there on the spot. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see, you know, what, what comes out of his motivation if, FBI, if the FBI is able to learn what it was. Uh, now, with the shooting, what kind of weapon was the shooter using? He had a, an assault-style rifle. He had at least one gun, an AR-15, I believe, uh, was, was the gun that he was using. Um, he also had another weapon with him, and police found other weapons in his car, weapons and ammunition. So, uh, had that officer not uh, engaged him, shot and killed him, it's hard to say how many others might have died. 
Stats are continued to add up here when it comes to mass shootings, specifically in Texas. What are the politicians saying in Texas, Jim? Well, they've dug in their heels on both sides of the issue. Some of them demanding uh, some changes to gun control laws. It wouldn't have helped in this case, but there, there, there's a, a growing cry for raising the uh, limit, the raising the age to buy assault rifles from 18 to 21. The suspect in Saturday's shooting was 33 years old, so it might not have made much difference. Uh, but uh, state leadership, including the governor, the lieutenant governor, and the attorney general, have said they don't want to see changes in state gun laws. They'd rather see uh, help for mental health. Uh, the governor specifically says that shootings like this one are, are a mental health issue. Now, let's move on to another deadly incident, this time uh, near the Gulf of uh, Mexico. Can you tell us more about uh, this incident where someone drove into a crowd of people? Sure. Yeah, there, there were people standing on a sidewalk or sitting on a curb waiting for a bus to come. This is in Brownsville, down on the southern tip of Texas, uh, just across the Rio Grande from Matamoros, Mexico. And when someone, uh, a man, drove an SUV down the street at a high rate of speed, this Range Rover uh, slammed into those people, it went up onto the curb, killed eight people there on the scene, and uh, rather seven people, others, seven more, were taken to the hospital. The driver himself also was injured, was hospitalized for a time, but now is out and is in custody. We're told, Michelle, that he is not cooperating with investigators, uh, but uh, the, they'll be checking his blood alcohol level to see if perhaps he was drunk. Uh, some witnesses there at the scene say he was yelling uh, racist uh, uh, comments as he drove down the street. We don't know about that either, but uh, it's, it's slow information here coming out. We appreciate your help this morning. Thank you so much. Thanks, Michelle. That is ABC News correspondent Jim Ryan reporting from Dallas. It is 823 at KSRO. Another protest is planned today in connection to the chokehold death of a homeless man in the New York City subway system. Scott Pringle reports. Train service had to be halted after protesters jumped onto the tracks at the Lexington Avenue 63rd Street station over the weekend. 13 arrested. <laughs> calling for charges in the death of Jordan Neely. It was a week ago, Daniel Penny put the deadly chokehold on Neely on the subway train after witnesses say Neely was acting out and making threats. No charges as of now, but a grand jury could get the case soon. Neely's death has been ruled a homicide. Scott Pringle, NBC News Radio, New York. The FDA is recalling more than 500,000 COVID tests over concerns they may be contaminated with bacteria. Lisa Taylor reports. The Food and Drug Administration said in a release that anyone with SD Biosensor Pilot COVID-19 at-home tests should discard them. The statement says the agency is looking into the kit's liquid solution and that direct contact with it could be a safety risk. It also may have compromised the test's accuracy. Most of the tests were distributed by CDS, but some were also given to Amazon. The FDA and parent company Roche are looking to figure out how many contaminated tests were sold. I'm Lisa Taylor. The Writers Guild of America remains on strike. The strike began after the WGA's contract with the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers expired last week. The Guild represents writers of film, TV, and streaming media, and the Alliance represents the studios. The WGA and AMPTP have been in talks for several weeks concerning improved compensation increases for writers amid the streaming era. WGA members also want studios to guarantee they won't be replaced with artificial intelligence computer systems. It is the first writer's strike since 2007. KSRO News Time now, 825. <laughs> see how things are shaping up on your commute. Here is Paul Maxwell. Thanks, Michelle. No incidents, but slowdowns continuing for the Monday morning roadways. South 101 it stretches of heavy starting just before airport. That'll continue down to just before Steel Lane. North 101 slows Santa Rosa Avenue up to College. Eastbound 12 heavy, 101 out to 4th, and westbound heavy from 101 out to just past Fulton. Stretches of heavy continuing through the Gravenstein Highway in Sebastopol. South 101 in northern Marin, heavy from San Antonio to Old Holly, but then a big stretch of slow for Roland all the way down to just past Lucky Drive. Highway 12, the usual heaviness, boys, Hot Springs to Sonoma Plaza. Your next update at 835. Now with Sonoma County's most accurate, most dependable forecast, here's Daniel Trucios. Thanks, Paul. We do have sunny skies later today at a high of 64, 56 along the coast. Still some clouds to get through this morning. Maybe a bit more rain, maybe. Uh, wind speeds will be light. Cloudy overnight, low 44 degrees. 
no more rain for the week. It's going to be mostly sunny, high 60s then for tomorrow and Wednesday. Thursday in the mid 70s, Friday then low 80s. It will be in the mid 60s on the coast by then. 52 in Sonoma, 49 in Cloverdale, 53 in Brunner Park, and 53 in Santa Rosa. KSRO News Time, 826. Recently overheard in the shared tenant laundry room. I'm so happy the weather's changing. Now I don't have to run our wall heaters as much. My energy bills have been so high. Seriously, maybe we can get the landlord to install solar or replace those old heaters. It would sure save us a ton of money, and the owner too. These washers and dryers are all electric, so they must also be paying high utility bills. A friend told me her property owner installed new mini split heat pumps and put solar on their building. Hmm. Yeah, have you heard those radio ads about a Sonoma County financing program for property owners? I'm gonna ask the owner to look into it. The property value would go up for sure. The Sonoma County Energy Independence Program is assisting rental property owners to make improvements with easy financing and more for over 125 types of improvements. It's paid back through property taxes. Search online for Sonoma County Energy Independence Program and find out more. Help the Redwood Empire Food Bank restore a sense of comfort and relief to families who've gone without for far too long. Because We Care underwriter Ongaro & Sons Plumbing, Heating & Air reminds you that there are three ways to donate to the Redwood Empire Food Bank. Donate your time, donate money, or donate food. Perhaps the need feels more urgent during the holidays, but unfortunately, food insecurity is in our community year-round. To donate to the Redwood Empire Food Bank, go to refb.org, refb.org. Sonoma County, get your free Reem Root heat pump water heater today. Yes, I said free water heater. In most cases, energy rebates and tax incentives pay for the complete installation. As a Sonoma clean power contractor, John Owen Services will be your best choice. Lower utility bills and reduce California's carbon footprint with an efficient electric Reem Root heat pump water heater. Call now, 855-456-2906, or visit our website at johnowenservices.com. Everyone, hope you had a great weekend. We are back in action today with a great roster of guests. Not buying it, Biden. I'm talking about his presidency. 36% approval rating, losing to Donald Trump and run to Santa's head-to-head, -head, first time ever. We'll talk about it. Tsunami of humanity about to hit our border, the expiration of Title 42, debt ceiling, consequential meeting on Tuesday. Biggest week of Joe Biden's career. Don't miss a minute, Brian Kilmeade Show. This morning at 9.06 here on KSRO. It is 8.29 at KSRO. I am Michelle Marquette. Marquess. At least uh, 27 mine workers have been killed in a fire in Peru. Fox News correspondent Jonathan Savage has the details. The fire broke out deep inside a gold mine in Peru's southern Arequipa region on Friday night or early Saturday morning. The cause is being investigated, but the local government says a short circuit may have led to an explosion around 330 feet below the surface. Relatives of victims were taken by bus to the mine. This bereaved woman demanding to see her husband's body. 175 miners were rescued safely. Jonathan Savage, Fox News. There's a risk of severe thunderstorms over part of the middle Mississippi Valley today after storms hit the Midwest and south central part of the country on Sunday. A number of tornadoes were reported throughout the weekend in western Minnesota, southern Indiana, and northern Missouri. We'll have updates from ABC News next. Sonoma County's News Talk, KSRO, on FM at 103.5 in Santa Rosa and Windsor, and now at 96.9 in Petaluma. We could learn more about the deadly mass shooting at a shopping center north of Dallas over the weekend. This woman who works at one of the stores in the Allen Premium Outlet Mall. There were other people running, there were some people crouched down. Um, in front of their car. Authorities are looking at suspect Mauricio Garcia's social media. At least eight people are now confirmed dead in a weekend crash at a bus stop in Brownsville, Texas. About three and a half weeks until the U.S. defaults on its debts unless the debt ceiling's raised. Financial and economic chaos would ensue. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, congressional leaders, head to the White House this week to try and reach some kind of an agreement. President Biden announcing today to reimburse airline travelers affected by major delays and cancellations. Talks continue in Saudi Arabia with the goal of reaching a temporary ceasefire in Sudan to get humanitarian aid to those in need. Closing arguments are underway in E. Jean Carroll's battery and defamation trial against former President Trump. Daria Albanray, BC.
from ABC News Tech Trends, U.S. regulators are moving to bar Meta from making money off data collected on minors. The Federal Trade Commission is looking to beef up its 2020 privacy order, which instituted a new privacy structure at Meta, which was then called Facebook. Now, a new report finds the company failed to comply with that order. The report they got was not good. TechCrunch's Devin Coldaway says now the agency wants to make some changes to its order. The most major piece is they are essentially proposing to completely prohibit Meta from monetizing data from anybody under 18. And he says it comes as both Facebook and Instagram deal with threats from newer competitors. Teens and, and younger people in their 20s and stuff are graduating to TikTok and uh, other platforms, so they have been doubling down on trying to capture the, the younger demographic. In a statement to ABC News, Meta called the FTC's move a political stunt. With Tech Trends, I'm Mike Dubusky, ABC News. For what it's worth, I'm Sherry Preston. Worries over the rise of AI. People should be happy that we're a little bit scared of this. That is Sam Altman, head of the company behind ChatGPT, who ABC News a few weeks ago about the rapid advance of artificial intelligence, and now Microsoft co-founder Bill Gates also speaking to ABC News. We're all scared that a bad guy could grab it. The fear of someone sinister with AI has Gates arguing against pausing development, telling ABC's Rebecca Jarvis. If you just pause the good guys and you don't pause everyone else, you're probably hurting yourself. You definitely want the good guys to have strong AI. Can you guarantee that? If you stop the good guys, you can guarantee it won't happen. And he says lawmakers at all levels need to get up to speed on AI as fast as they can. The government has a role to play here. You know, they won't be the experts, but they have to be part of that discussion. For what it's worth, Jerry Preston, ABC News. Huh? Live and local from our studios in Santa Rosa, this is Sonoma County's Morning News on Marconi Award-winning KSRO. Good morning. It is 8.33. Today is Monday, May 8th. I'm Michelle Marquis. And Dan Trusios, our producer, web editor, Jeff Woodworth. All right. Did you go and see the Guardians of the Galaxy? What did you think? It was outstanding. Okay, how did, how did your boys take it? Were they okay with some of the animal stuff, or was it too big? Yeah, you know, that's part of it. I, you, I'm glad you brought that up with Fellini on Friday. That is kind of a tough part of the movie, which yeah. makes it kind of a deep, deeper movie. But it is so funny and so great. It's amazing. Yeah, I had a little trouble with the tone, because sometimes it was hilarious, and then, like, yeah. right after that, it was so dark. And I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. So yeah. uh, emotionally, a little bit of a roller coaster. Uh, totally. but, but I do think it was one of the better Marvel movies of the last couple of years. So uh, I thought it was good. I just totally, it threw me around a bunch. <laughs> so, yeah. Emotional roller coaster. Yeah, for sure. All right, let's look at our uh, top stories this morning. A high-speed chase through Santa Rosa ended with the suspect in a rollover crash. You may soon need to pay a toll to drive over Highway 37. And a luxury hotel in Boys Hot Springs is in hot water for union busting activities. Coming up in sports, how about a game four from L.A. tonight? Warriors and Lakers dubs trying to even things up in two games apiece. 7 p.m. tip right here on KSRO. <laughs> It is 8.35 now at KSRO. He is keeping track of the morning commute. Uh, Paul Maxwell is here. Paul, I saw that there's an incident on Todd Road. What have we got going on there? Well, you're pretty close there, Michelle. It is North 101 just before Todd. Originally reported as pipes in the right lane. The CHV has amended that to plastic tubes in the right lane. They're not saying how big those are, but they're plastic tubes nonetheless. Just a bit of a backup on the approach. North 101, though, is heavy from just before Todd, continuing up towards college. Southbound, not too bad. A little of the usual backup at Highway 12. Highway 12 and the Gravity State Highway. Watch out for those brake lights heading towards Sebastopol and the usual heaviness for Highway 12 in the Sonoma Valley. From just north of Boys Hot Springs and just south of Sonoma Plaza. Lots of brake lights, though, in Marin County. It's a crawl in Nevada for South 101, Roland down to Ignacio, and then just solid slope down to just past North San Pedro. Now with Sonoma County's most accurate, most dependable forecast, here's Daniel Trusios. Thank you, Paul. We do have a high of 64 for today with sunny skies in the afternoon. 56 along the coast. Uh, still maybe some morning rain, but that should be mostly gone at the moment. Still some clouds. Cloudy overnight, low 44. No more rain expected tonight or the rest of the week. It's going to be mostly sunny skies each day near 70 for Tuesday and Wednesday. Mid-70s then for Thursday and then Friday up 
to the low 80s. 54 in Sebastopol, 51 in Kenwood, and 53 in Santa Rosa. Traffic on the fives, weather six times an hour, mornings on KSRO, where the news time is 836. A man has been arrested on suspicion of leading Santa Rosa police on a wild chase while allegedly driving.